Hey everyone, I'm um, Corey Lee, the content manager here at Honda Discover, and thank you so much for joining us for another Facebook Live. Uh, today, we are, as you can see behind me, we are talking all about Madrid, Spain. It's one of my favorite cities in Europe. Uh, here at Honda Discover, we have some really fantastic accommodations in Madrid. So uh, I'm really excited to talk all about the attractions, wheelchair accessibility, and what all you can do if you're planning a visit to Madrid. We know that now is kind of a weird time to travel, but it's never too early to plan for 2021 or 2022. Or if you're based in Europe, then maybe even like next month you can go to Madrid. Um, if you're that lucky. So uh, we will be talking all about Madrid today with Arturo, who is the owner and founder of the tour company Accessible Madrid. So welcome, Arturo. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Corey. Hi, everyone. Thanks for inviting me uh, to share with you what is Accessible Madrid, uh, what we offer to ensure our clients uh, an unforgettable and uh, remarkable holidays in Spain. Yeah, when I went to Madrid, I think it was back in, I'm gonna, I want to say April of 2018, and you were my guide. Um, so we did a full day tour in Madrid, and then the next day we did another tour in Toledo, Spain. Um, so right like an hour outside of Madrid, and both tours were spectacular. So uh, I would highly recommend using our tour's company. It's called Accessible Madrid. But Arturo, can you tell us a little bit about, just to start out, about why you started Accessible Madrid and how you founded it? Um, well, um, I used to work in investment bank uh, industry before. Uh, Accessible Madrid was founded in uh, 2014 and uh, mainly because I was looking to do something uh, for, for people, uh, if I could help anyhow not only selling uh, fans or this kind of uh, products, but um, one, I, I, I love culture, I love art. And uh, I was uh, visiting the, the Prada Museum in Madrid, one of the main uh, highlights in the city. And then uh, I was just checking the, uh, the brochure and then I, 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 I saw a couple of uh, Japanese uh, guys that were really, really old and they were struggling to get uh, to the bus uh, with their uh, walkers and uh, rollators. And then I thought uh, how difficult it could be for them to visit the city, especially Madrid, which uh, in which uh, the city center is, uh, you know, it's very narrow streets and uh, not, you know, some, some streets are not easy to walk, well, not walk, but uh, to drive with a, with a bus. Uh, so probably they will, they will, they will be, uh, they would be heading to directly to the hotel. So they would miss one of the most important things in the city to walk, uh, like, like it's a, I mean, this is the, the old city center of, of Madrid. Then uh, I Googled uh, something like about, you know, uh, accessible uh, travel and uh, private tours in Madrid, something like that. And uh, how was it turns out? Because I couldn't find anything in, uh, uh, in Madrid. Uh, so this gave me the idea to, you know, to study the case and, and see uh, in the next three months if I could, you know, develop a, like a business plan or, and uh, this was the, the beginning of, uh, of Accessible Madrid. That's awesome. Yeah, that's uh, good to hear. And thank you so much for starting that company. Um, you've done a lot um, since starting it and offered some really fantastic tours. And I know some other people who have gone and they've, Really, really enjoyed all of your tours. So, uh, yeah, thank you for that. And I can't wait until I'm back in Madrid and can go on another tour with you. Um, but I do want to remind anyone watching um, to please leave your comments and questions. Um, and we will do our best to answer. Um, so we have a couple watchers now. Thank you so much for uh, watching. And next, you know, once the, the next thing I want to talk about is when someone actually gets in Madrid, um, they are probably going to need, you know, some kind of accessible transportation to get to their hotel or get around the city. So is the public transportation in Madrid wheelchair accessible or does your company have its own like van? Um, I know the answer to this, but let's tell everyone else about how accessible the transportation is. Okay. Thank you. This is a very good question. And, uh, 
Uh, it's a mixture of both. Uh, we have very good public transportation and we do also have a very good private transportation. Accessible Madrid can offer, of course, uh, wheelchair accessible transportation transfers from the airport or the main um, uh, train stations in Madrid to the hotel and back. Uh, we use uh, Mercedes Viano, uh, accessible one. And uh, in the city, you can find uh, uh, the bus, uh, the, the, the public bus is 100% uh, wheelchair accessible in the whole city. 75% yeah. uh, of uh, subway, straight, uh, subway uh, uh, stations are, are accessible. Wow. And there is an ongoing pr uh, process, an ongoing uh, investment or project to, to make them 100% uh, uh, accessible. This will happen oh, wow. within the next five, seven years. But 75% uh, of them are, are uh, already accessible. And I would say also that uh, many of the public taxis that uh, you can find in the city are, um, are fully accessible. Uh, it's an increasing number of uh, taxis uh, joining the fleet because they find uh, they, they give a better service and there is no um, like a higher cost for them. Uh, so, uh, and in terms of, uh, of uh, train uh, stations, uh, we have uh, uh, Atocha train station, which is fully accessible. They have an, an ex uh, excellent service, which is called Atendo, that will help you with the suitcases, uh, with a wheelchair, uh, taking you directly to your wagon, to the train. Uh, and the, this uh, fast speed train, which uh, we have a network in Spain, a uh, very wide ne network, a very broad network. And it's uh, these trains are full, fully accessible uh, and they are really, really comfortable. Nice, awesome. And uh, when we were doing our tour, we did use the accessible taxis. We used your private van um, to get around. And we also did like a walking tour or a rolling tour, I should say. Um, and someone is actually asking, Vanessa um, is asking, how are the curb cutouts on sidewalks? And so when we were doing our tour, Arturo, um, I mean, I thought it was tremendously accessible. I mean, it was easy to roll around and get around the city center with my wheelchair, but can you speak a little bit on kind of the layout of the city and how accessible that is? Okay. Uh your visit was ago, I mean, two, two years ago from now. Uh, and uh, uh, that time curbs were fine in the city, but uh, this has been an, a, a huge investment to improve those and also the sidewalks. Uh, sidewalks in many areas in the city are, are much better. The pavement is much better. Uh, and also um, they, there are more uh, streets for pedestrians uh, because the traffic is, uh, you can find uh, less traffic in the city. I mean, in terms of cars and noise, and more they gave those streets to to pedestrians, which uh, for for this industry and for for the clients and the people visiting Madrid is, is I mean, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, awesome. And uh, well, we have one more question about uh, transportation. Is there an extra fee for the taxis for a wheelchair traveler? No. Um, the, the, the price is the same. It's just uh -huh. the same. Awesome. Yeah, good to hear. And um, now that we've kind of talked about transportation, you know, once someone does land in Madrid, they're going to, you know, use those accessible taxis and the train and your transportation through Accessible, accessible Madrid to get to their hotel. Um, so I do want to talk about a couple hotels that Honda Discover does offer. If you just go to hondiscover.com, you can check out these hotels. So two that I wanna recommend are the Hotel Claridge. It is located um, on a plaza next to the M30 motorway, and it has easy access to the heart of Madrid and the financial district. And if you know you are based in Europe and you wanna go very soon, there is a lot of availability at the Hotel Claridge uh, next month in November. Um, so these are just a couple photos of it. Um, it looks absolutely beautiful. I personally have not stayed there, but every review that I've seen of it says how amazing it is. And then the second hotel that I wanna mention is Eurostars Central. Um, so Eurostars Central is an avant-garde hotel in the heart of Madrid and it's close to a lot of the major attractions 
And again, they have a lot of availability um, in November as well, if you are based in Europe and want to go. So I really love the color of like, how that red pops in the bedroom right there. Um, it looks like a very modern and like chic hotel. And uh, do you know anything about those two hotels, Arturo? And would you like to give any comments about those? Yeah, uh, actually, I live very close to Claridge Hotel. Uh, it's uh, very close to the Retiro Park. You already know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, the other one is, uh, you, you already said that, is in, in the very centric, uh, central uh, central Madrid, uh, just in front of one of the most important food markets in Madrid. Uh, food markets is one of the, I would say, the highlights uh, in the city. Things that uh, right. it, it plays a map. So basically, it doesn't matter if we have many different food markets. You. You already visit uh, one of them, which is uh, San Miguel Market. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. The beautiful one next to uh, Plaza Mayor, uh, and the the hotel uh, Eurostar is just in front of Barcelo uh, food um, food market, which is uh, used by by locals. Uh, you can see how locals make uh, you know the purchases for the week, like a fruit. They select the fruits and meat, and it's a uh, Oh my God! It's uh, very very interesting to to see and watch and try. Of course, uh, our wines, our cheeses, our ham. We have a yeah. tour actually in that in that area, visiting two different food markets. This one, which is in front of Eurostar's uh, hotel, and uh, and then San Anton, uh, which is a couple of blocks away. Uh, this is in, um, in this neighborhood, which is very famous in Madrid for. Uh, it's, it's cuisine and uh, culture and, and the shops. Shopping is uh, great in this area. And, and we visit both of them and we, we can try different things in, uh, and we tell you know, the story of uh, food markets in Madrid. How did they help uh, the people from Madrid uh, during the civil war to, 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 get, you know, to get food, fresh food in their homes and everything. So yeah. uh, very interesting story. Wow, great. Yeah, I mean, those hotels sound spectacular and like, um, they're near some really great food markets and attractions that will definitely delve more into the attractions in just a bit. So now let's come to talk about Madrid's outdoor experiences. I think that now during the pandemic, it's been really difficult to kind of do a lot of activities indoors, but there are some really great outdoor attractions in Madrid. And uh, specifically, I would really love to kind of start out by talking about the uh, Buen Retiro Park. Um, so it's a park that I went to during our tour and uh, my wheelchair battery actually was almost dead after a full day of driving around the city in my wheelchair. So we didn't get to spend a ton of time at the park, but the time that we did spend there, it was absolutely beautiful and one of the most gorgeous sites, I think, in Madrid. Um. Well, uh, Retiro, I live just in front of Retiro Park. Now, now I'm watching the trees uh, through the window. It's an uh, incredible park. Uh, it's, uh, well, my place is just uh, 100 meters away from the lake. Uh, actually, I must tell you that uh, there are rowing, rowing boats, uh, especially designed for people uh, using wheelchairs. Uh, oh, wow. So this is very important to know. I think they have two or three. Uh, so they are fully accessible, so you you can row with your with your wheelchair. So this is good to know. Next to to this lake, we have another lake uh, where we can find the Crystal Palace, which is an amazing palace made of uh, glass. Uh, it was made uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, and it's fully accessible. And it uh, it is linked together with another palace we, uh, that we can find inside the Retiro Park, which is called Velasquez. Uh, uh, palace. Both of these uh, palaces are um, linked to a uh, modern art museum, the Reina Sofia uh, Modern Art Museum. So they have um, exhibitions of art every uh, all year round. Now they have a very interesting one. So not only the nature, uh, not only the people that you can find the uh, atmosphere in Madrid, we only have 50, I think it's 58 days of uh, rain uh, is the average uh, nice. across the year. So. Madrid, this is a very, very sunny uh, city. Uh, the te average temperature would be around 21 uh, Celsius. So it's yeah. really, really nice temperature. And uh, if you visit the, the Retiro, you can see both lakes walk. It's really, I mean, it's fully accessible, the park. You have terraces, uh, so you can have your beer or your drink or even 
uh, eat now. They're, they have an, uh, an old palace. This is a smaller one where they, they have three different restaurants inside, fully accessible. It's called Florida uh, Retiro, and it's an amazing place. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, Vanessa says she's ready for an accessible boat ride with her husband. Uh, I'm ready to get out on those. Uh, also, I can't wait to come back to Madrid and experience that for myself. Um, so yeah, it sounds like uh, there's a lot of fun to be had outdoors. And also another good outdoor attraction is the Plaza Mayor. Um, and so it's uh, kind of the most, I guess, iconic area of the city. And there are some food markets near it, and it's easy to like roll around. As you can see from the photo, they have some outdoor dining um, during the summer months, and um, it was absolutely a beautiful area when I visited. Yeah, this is the heart of Madrid. We call this area the district. It's called the Habsburg uh, district. It's the oldest part of the city, in which you can find not only the Plaza Mayor, uh, but uh, Plaza de Sol, which is, all, is like the um, uh, uh, center of Madrid, but uh, geographically, is a kilometer number zero in Spain. It's oh, okay. uh, and then uh, you can also find the Plaza de la Villa, is where our, the the old city hall used to be in Madrid. It's a beautiful uh, square and building. And then, uh, of course, uh, the cathedral, the Almudena, the cathedral, and then the uh, the Royal Palace. All these uh, places are located in um, in the Habsburg area, which uh, is the oldest part of the city. Uh, there's a, just to mention that you can find in Plaza Mayor, uh, in the center of Plaza Mayor, there are cobblestones. In Madrid, you, um, there are very, very few, very few cobblestones, only uh, in this plaza, but uh, yeah, they are very easy to avoid. Uh, uh, and uh, next to uh, the Royal Palace, there is a small area also with cobblestones, but the rest of the city, the pavement is really good for a wheelchair uh, user. Yeah, nice. I do remember there was some cobblestone there at Plaza Mayor in the center, but we kind of just went around it and did like kind of stayed on the sidewalks and it was pretty smooth there. And so now that we've kind of talked about a couple of the outdoor experiences, let's talk about what indoor experiences there are that are accessible. So first, I think, you know, the first thing we should talk about is the food. So maybe the marketplace. I always tell everyone that Madrid has the best food in the world, I believe. And I think the best places to get that is at the market. So there's the Mercado de San Miguel, and there's also Platea Madrid, which are two options that I was able to experience. Um, so would you recommend those, Arturo? Uh, yes, uh, I, as I said before, Madrid is, uh, in every district in Madrid, you can find, you can find a food market. San Miguel is in the Habsburg uh, district. Uh, but every district has its uh, its own uh, food market. Maybe the most famous one is the uh, is San Miguel because it's in that area. It's a touristy area. But uh, yeah, I, is, uh, yeah I'll, I'll just yeah. tell everyone this is um, a photo of uh, the Mercado de San Miguel. By the way, uh, in that in that uh, food market, you can find stalls with. Uh, every every type of food i mean tapas uh you can find paella you remember uh oh, yeah. you can try paella there's uh, uh, a wine store a cheese store uh the spanish cheese is very unknown around the world and it's really 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 good we have uh dozens and dozens of types uh strong mild uh we have um also, also uh seafood very good seafood in spain we have very good uh, seafood and, and fresh fish and you can also find in this uh in this um, uh, mercado or food market. Also, uh, places like uh, in this area, like um, the Royal Palace, I mean, it's a must to visit uh, the, uh, the palace inside, or uh, places like uh, the museums, uh, the Prado, uh, probably the best uh, uh, museum in Europe, the Reina Sofia uh, Museum, which is the modern art museum, and the Thyssen, these three, Museums uh, are so-called the the art triangle, and another palaces that I recently uh, visited because it was not open to the public is is called Liria Palace. This palace is uh, recently open to to the public. It belongs to the house of uh, Alba, uh, one of the most important novels in, in Spain, and it's really beautiful. It's not as big as the uh, uh, Royal Palace, but it's uh, incredible inside. You can even see the letters of 
Christopher Columbus, uh, Goya paintings. Uh, it's amazing. It's, it's, I mean, I don't think it's more than 12 euros to visit that. And even free for wheelchair users. Oh. And they, you have the cathedral we were talking about. Uh, normally, we don't visit the cathedral inside because it's modern. And uh, I would recommend to instead to visit the uh, neo-Romanesque uh, crypt uh, beneath the, the cathedral, which is beautiful. This is uh, something uh, not many people know about this, and I would recommend to visit that. The Basilica of San Francisco uh, is the biggest church in Madrid. It's very close to the cathedral also, and it's uh, full of uh, frescoes of uh, Goya and Goya paintings. Uh, in the walls, so it's a be beautiful one, and not many people know about that too. And also a little church that I I love to visit from time to time, uh, which is called the San Antonio de los Alemanes, uh, in the city center of Madrid. Uh, it's very small, but it's a very cute uh, uh, church. Uh, more things that I would recommend to do uh, indoor, indoors: uh, chocolate and churros is something you can't miss in in Madrid. Oh, yeah. you visit Madrid especially in the winter. Uh, hot chocolate uh, with churros. We already did that, uh, Corey, and uh, it's something you can't miss, uh, especially in a place called San Ginés. It's uh, probably the uh, most famous place in Madrid. It's close to the uh, to the Royal Palace. Uh, and uh, also I would mention, it's not maybe in the old part of Madrid, but it's uh, worth to visit. It's called Platea, which is a kind of a food market, but like, like a very modern one. It used to be a theater, and now it's a place where you can have Try different tapas and uh, small dishes, and you also, uh, always have live music uh, in the evening, which is very very nice. And last but not least, uh, yeah. I would never leave Madrid uh, visiting uh, uh, Corral de la Morería, which is uh, the flamenco show for me is the best. Not only in Madrid, but probably in Spain, uh, the best singers, best, best dancers, and uh, now they they have been awarded a year ago with uh, one Michelin star. Uh, the restaurant, and we can tell you that they, they have a very, very competitive price for uh, like a one Michelin star uh, dinner uh, and, a, and, and an outstanding uh, flamenco show. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and uh, the platea, there's a photo of it. It's uh, in an old cinema, like Arturo said. So it's beautiful, um, beautifully designed, and lots of restaurant options. When I was there, we had actually just eaten lunch um, and had paella at the market so i wasn't too hungry but uh we did eat some olives and they were delicious and just you can you know roll around and get some snacks and um some light appetizer bites or you can have a whole meal so uh, the platea madrid is amazing and as is everywhere uh, the almudena cathedral that we talked about i was a big fan of it so um, there's definitely a lot to see both indoors and outdoors while you're touring Madrid. Um, but Arturo, why do you think Madrid is such a great place to visit and what makes it so special to you? Ooh, I would mention many uh, factors, but uh, first I would say, uh, I, I think I already mentioned that uh, we only have 58 days of rain a year and average temperature about 21, uh, degrees Celsius. Uh, people from Madrid are very open. I, when I say very open, is that they really, really are. Uh, we always welcome people from ab from abroad, and not only from abroad in Spain, but abroad in Madrid. Um, and we have a broad tourist offer, uh, like uh, sport events and uh, cultural events, uh, very big ones. It's a very, very safe city. Uh, this is very uh, uh, probably is the first. Uh, thing that many people will ask. Very, very safe city, uh, not only during the day, but at night. Uh, you can go for dinner and maybe end uh, like, uh, you know, that we usually have dinner until late. Uh, but if, let's say you go uh, for dinner at 10 uh, p.m. and you're you, you finish at 11.30, uh, you can go for a walk in the city. doesn't matter where you are. Uh, it's really, really safe. But not only in Madrid, this happens in Spain. Uh, in every city in Spain. Uh, we have the most important art museum in Europe. Uh, I already mentioned that, the Prado, yeah. and other important museums. Um, we have the largest uh, royal palace uh, in Southern Europe, and one of the most beautiful ones. Uh, a broad and top quality uh, 
cuisine offer and uh, local, both local and international. Uh, excellent value for money, like uh, for shopping and, uh, and for restaurants. Uh, excellent accessibility, I already mentioned that. Madrid, I would say, is top uh, among the three, four more best uh, accessible uh, uh, cities in, in, in Europe. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, world heritage cities uh, within one hour drive from Madrid, like Toledo, Segovia, yeah. that uh, can help you to have Madrid as a base. You can you can have a hotel in Madrid, to stay for let's say for one week, and then you can visit Madrid. But also these world heritage uh, cities that I I mentioned. And last but not least, uh, I would have uh, I would say that uh, we have an excellent uh, accessible and broad hotel and apartment offer nice yeah i mean uh metro definitely offers so much and i know that you mentioned there are a couple cities outside of madrid that are good for like day trips including toledo which we actually visited when i was there so um i thought that it was really such a beautiful city this is us kind of overlooking it together and i mean as you can see from this photo it's just I mean, spectacularly beautiful. Um, there's nothing quite like Toledo um, in Spain. So can you talk very briefly maybe about uh, what Toledo offers and why someone should consider it for a day trip? Okay, I, I think the picture tells everything, <laughs> Corey. Yeah, okay. uh, uh, this is what re you can really expect when you go to Toledo. You you are immersed in the, in, in the in a town and a city of the Middle Ages, uh, in, the, in the city of the three cultures, you know, the Muslims, the, the Christians, and the Jews, uh, where they lived in peace for many years. Uh, Toledo is just uh, 70 kilometers from Madrid, less, on, less than one hour, 45 minutes from Madrid city center. So it's uh, very convenient for uh, like a day trip. Uh, we arrive early in the morning, like at, let's say 10, 10 a.m., and then we visit the the cathedral, which is the first Gothic cathedral in Spain. Uh, it's an amazing cathedral. It takes around one one hour to visit inside. And uh, I would uh, I could tell you we could be there for eight hours and if we, if we go very in, in detail. Uh, and then we visit the, the Jewish uh, quarter and some other uh, churches in, in, uh, in old Toledo. Uh, and then we stop in a very nice uh, restaurant when we can try uh, the delicacies of uh, this uh, this city in, uh, in near Madrid. So we would be back around five or six uh, in the afternoon in Madrid. So still time to to do some shopping or to uh, to wander uh, through the city. Uh, so I would say it's a very good choice once you are in Madrid to take a, a, a day trip in um, in Toledo. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I mean, it was one of my favorite tour days ever because Toledo is such just a beautiful city. I mean, as we rolled around it, it is a bit, I think, bumpier and um, and it has more cobblestone than Madrid maybe, but it's completely worth it and um, definitely worth exploring. You know, if you're already in Madrid, you might as well go an hour further and see the beautiful city of Toledo. So um, quite a few great day trips from Madrid. But uh, now can you talk about maybe is, is Madrid doing anything to improve or to showcase accessibility overall? And are there any like unique accessibility initiatives that you would like to talk about? Actually, yes. Uh, as, as I said before, there is an ongoing process to make accessible all subway, sta subway stations. Uh, also, there is an ongoing process and project to make uh, wider sidewalks and um, uh, more streets for pedestrians, as I said before as well. Uh, Madrid Airport will be connected in the near future with a uh, fast speed train um, uh, network, which is very convenient. So if you are not stopping by Madrid, you can take your fast speed train and maybe go to Barcelona or the south of Madrid or Valencia or whatever. So this, uh, this this will be very helpful and very convenient for people with uh, uh, wheelchairs uh, or limited mobility. Um, uh, there is a plan uh, for staffs uh, at the hotel, any hotel that are being instructed on how to deal to deal and deliver a good service to people with reduced mo limited mobility or disability. 
Uh, we are also improving the websites of uh, both private and public uh, sites. Uh, this is a European pr uh, program, and also as uh, Spain is part of a European Union, we are we are uh, doing that. Uh, and uh, as I said before, there is an increasing number of uh, wheelchair accessible taxis that are is very convenient. You can stop a taxi anywhere in the city uh, without making any reservation. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love that Madrid is trying to just keep getting better and better and improving accessibility with the subway system and everything that it's doing right now. So that's amazing to hear. And it makes me want to come back um, if we're ever allowed back into Europe again. Um, I hear as Americans, uh, Madrid's going to be the first place I go. So I can't wait for that day. Uh, but for the last couple questions, um, if you could only recommend three activities or attractions, what would those three be? I know it's a hard decision because there's so much yeah. that the city offers, but yeah, if you could only pick three, what would you pick? It's very, uh, this is very difficult uh, okay. to decide. I mean, uh, but if I, if I were to decide uh, three things that I would uh, do or visit in, in Madrid, one of them would be the Royal Palace. I think especially for American people, uh, a, a royal palace is always uh, something different, uh, especially this one, the largest in Southern Europe, and it's really, really amazing. Um, I will also do the dinner and uh, in the flamenco show at yeah. Corral de la Moraria. I think this is a highlight, uh, not only because of the show, which is different uh, and special, but the dinner is really worth it. And also, I would choose probably the Prado. The Prado is, uh, the museum is something else. I mean, I would do many other things, but if I had to choose this, this would be the, the three, yeah, of yeah. them. Awesome. <laughs> uh, if I had to pick three myself, I would say definitely go to the market, um, enjoy all of the food that the uh, Mercado de San Miguel has to offer. Um, and then I really loved um, going inside the crypt of the Almudena Cathedral. Um, that was absolutely beautiful. And then I think the Buen Retiro Park um, is a must do. So um, definitely hit up all of those attractions and a lot more. We definitely haven't covered everything that the city has to offer, but I hope that we've covered enough to make everyone, you know, get that travel itch to visit Madrid whenever they feel that it's safe to do so again. So uh, Arturo, thank you so much for joining me. And can you tell everyone where they can find out more information about Accessible Madrid? Thank you very much, uh, Corey. Uh, it's great seeing you again. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation uh, to speak about my city. Um, I hope things will change uh, within the next months. Uh, and uh, probably uh, people can uh, visit Madrid uh, in a, uh, the way they wanted to, to do. Eh? And uh, thank you everyone for, for your attention and feel free to contact me. We, we, our um, image address, uh, our website is uh, accessiblemadrid.com and uh, uh, you can write us at info at accessiblemadrid.com if you have any, any query or any anything you would like to know about Madrid. Huh? Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much again. I really appreciate you taking this time to join us. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye bye. bye. Yeah. Thank you uh, everyone so much for joining us today to talk about accessibility in Madrid. It's been a lot of fun and I hope that you've enjoyed learning more about Madrid and hopefully planning your trip uh, for next year or 2022 or whenever you feel that it's safe to travel to Madrid again and able. So um, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you again in a couple weeks. So see ya. Have a good day.